It's time to play some Battle Brothers. What could possibly go wrong? We're right here at the start of the game, and we're going to be starting this abridged commentary series in tutorial mode. Luckily, they are lying. This game almost makes a point of not having a tutorial. So we're entering something that claims to be the tutorial with an ominous message in the corner saying how badly it's going to go before the game even starts. So they're clearly priming you for failure here. We're going with the default settings for our campaign, which happen to be the easiest settings, so they know it's going to be a difficult one for dirty newcomers like me. I have actually played the game before, but only for a couple of hours, and then I rage quit back when it came out. So let's see how far I can get this time. In this abridged commentary, we'll only be covering the most important parts, of course, so we may be able to get to the point when I rage quit really fast. Let's see. We start off in this tutorial-like thing where you start in a battle that's ongoing, you've got a couple of guys still alive, this is like an existing mercenary company, you need to survive this battle and the point of the game is to make a mercenary company, so I'm guessing the tutorial aspect is that we start with a few experienced guys, or very slightly experienced guys I should say, and it'll give us a couple of pointers about how to actually do this rebuilding after this fight. As for the fight itself, we've got ourselves here a hex-based, turn-based tactics game. The hexes are aligned so that you can't face people left to right, which is odd because the fights are left to right in general. The guys who are facing to the right are on your side, the guys facing to the left are the other side, which does get a bit confusing when you go behind each other, but anyway. We need to kill a couple of guys, and what you have here is an action point system, so you can choose to attack in your turn and it uses a few action points. It also builds up fatigue, so you can't do something every turn, you have to let your fatigue go away as well. Which personally I'm all against, but that's part of the game. So right here, I'm using a bunch of action points to swing an axe at that guy, looks like we hit him, and he nearly died, so let's keep it up like that. Our guy with a spear kills the enemy behind us. Then the guy with a mining pig almost kills my guy with an axe. Luckily our spear guy steps in to save the day. And there we go, we've got away from the tutorial battle with the three characters we were allowed to have not dead, so that's already a big advantage. You might notice that the loot we get from the battle is virtually nothing compared to what was on the ground and how many people were there. That's a running theme in this game, you generally don't get very much for doing anything in order to stop the player getting stuff, as far as I can tell, because that's part of the game is that stuff is quite rare. Well, we'll get to that later. Here's a look at the world map. So the premise of the game is that we're going to be walking around on this world map. There are loads of towns. The towns give out randomly generated missions for money. You do them, try to actually make more money than you lose by doing them, and if you can do that enough times you can build up your numbers, your equipment level, and you have a renowned stat as well that unlocks harder missions. And I think at some point the world ends and then you have to try and survive when like orcs show up or something. Anyway, we're a long way from that. We need to finish the tutorial mission. So to start our new mercenary company, we effectively have to finish what the old mercenary company was doing, that being hunting some guy down, so we're going to take on a mission to go and defeat this guy and his party. First though, we need some more guys to do the fighting for us. So here at the town the mission is based out of, we can hire some random guys to join our Battle Brothers crew. Most of them suck, or pretty much all of them suck, because this is a low level settlement. But we all have to start somewhere, so we are going to have to hire a bunch of guys wearing sacks and wielding knives, that sort of thing. The guys also have backstories and those affect what their initial stats will be. I ended up buying one expensive guy and a couple of random guys just to fill out the numbers. We then also have to buy them some stuff to fight with. They just come with pretty much nothing, the most basic possible equipment, so we need to buy equipment from the shop here. Getting a couple of shields, for example, might allow us to not die. That was something I remembered from when I played before, that having shields was very useful. Our expensive guy comes with a level up to apply, so he slightly increases stats. The level ups don't seem to make an enormous difference as far as I can tell, so he's essentially as weak as everyone else. I think the equipment you're holding makes a bigger difference, but feel free to let me know how that all works in the comments. So we've eventually geared ourselves up, 
I did buy some armor as well, we've essentially used up all of our cash. So our party of 6 brothers now is good to go. You can have 12 fighting at a time, so that's something we need to aspire to, to be more efficient. There was a brief aside to this mission, where you had to go and talk to a local town, but that didn't really do anything, so soon we're back where we were before. I hired another guy at this point, I just thought I'll get a cheap guy and give him no equipment so that he can just run out in front of our line or something and take arrows, that sort of plan. We are going to be eating food during our trek out to find our quest location, and you have to pay your guys daily salaries. So you're constantly losing money and food, which costs money, and you need to make more money than you're going to lose along the way. There was also a tools stat there. Tools are something you use to repair your gear. At first I thought that wasn't going to matter very much, but it matters an enormous amount. I'm playing Breath of the Wild at the moment, a game famous for its low durability equipment. This game blows it out of the water, your equipment's pretty much going to be gone in most battles. So we're going to need lots of tools. Anyway, here is this battle. So this is the finale of the tutorial, essentially. We just have to defeat this small band of enemies. What I thought I'd do is line up with our guys with shields roughly in the middle, but the enemy you can see are kind of moving downwards, and that is because my crazy running guy in a sack carrying a knife is doing the job. I wasn't really sure what job this was going to be. I thought if I just kind of run round behind them, maybe we can aggro a couple of enemies away from the group and make things easier. That's the plan. In the meantime, our guy with a crossbow can shoot at the enemy and there we actually get a hit. The crossbow has a very poor chance to hit, so we're getting lucky there. Generally everything has a poor chance to hit, I should say, but the crossbow is particularly bad, especially at long range. Here I'm stepping in, trying to surround the edge of the enemy group after they effectively didn't move during their next turn. Unfortunately, you can't very often advance and attack, especially with two-handed weapons, so we're kind of just standing there now. Another shot goes off, and we've almost killed one of the enemies with our crossbow attacks, that's pretty good. Very low probability for that to actually be happening, so this is good luck. And the enemy are going after my sacrificial guy at the back there, meaning their leader, the guy we're actually supposed to kill, is now locked in combat with us, while his bodyguards are off doing nothing down to the right. Could be useful. Unfortunately, he's almost killed my expensive guy, which is a shame. Guys without shields can get killed very quickly in combat if you get bad RNG and the enemy happen to hit you. Unfortunately, what you can't do is choose what order to take your guys' actions in each turn. So we can't be too strategic, you kind of just have to work with the order that appears. Because Minrad here has a shield, we can do a knockback move that makes the enemy in front move back if it connects. I was just sort of trying it there, I don't think that was a very good opportunity to do it, so we've made the enemy step back a bit. It does mean if they want to attack me again they need to step forward, but in this specific case they're knocked back to a position that's still next to somebody, so it doesn't do anything. We can also do this raise shield move, shield wall. This means you're less likely to die when the enemy attack you, of course. The downside is it massively builds up your fatigue, so you can't hold your shield up for a long time. It uses more fatigue points than you regain by waiting around. So you need to sort of strategically gamble by sometimes not raising your shield if the opportunity arises. I'm trying to escape with my nearly dead expensive guy here, but it turns out that if you try to move away from an enemy when you're next to them, they automatically attack you, so we actually get even closer to death as a result. But we've learned a lesson there, I suppose. Looks like the aggro plan, though, is still working. They're very distracted by that pointless guy off at the edge of the map. And that's doing wonders for my crossbow guy, who is still able to stand in a relatively dangerous open position and snipe away. Unfortunately, they've got a ranged guy as well who shoots him right back there, so need to be a bit careful. Whether my crossbow is better than their regular bow, I don't know. We do know what's good, though. It's our guy with the spear who yet again takes down an opponent, so far he's doing most of the work. Our other guys have much lower chance to hit. I think a regular weapon has about a 50% chance to hit, but a spear it's more like 70, and then there are other modifiers like the skill of the user. Clearly though, spears are the future, so we'll come back to that. Right now we've got a meat cleaver, and we're cleaving at this enemy, seems to be doing something, but I'm 
content to sit behind my shield with that guy. I don't really need to because the enemy is actually just attacking my expensive nearly dead guy next to him, who dodges all of the attacks, so luckily he doesn't die, but my luck now runs out because my sacrificial guy gets hit trying to run away from the enemy, then gets pursued and hit again and dies. And then, in the main enemy's next round, he does kill my expensive guy. So we've lost about one and a half thousand gold so far in this mission. I think the mission is worth something like 400 gold. It's going pretty well, suffice to say. The reign of terror of our crossbow guy is coming to an end now because his line of sight is blocked. Line of sight gives you a sort of not benefit of the doubt system where if something that's blocking your line of sight's sort of not, like right here, it counts as being in your line of sight. The hex system makes line of sight calculations a bit confusing, but basically it errs on the side of not giving you line of sight, so it needs to be ideal for you to shoot. We managed to grab another cleaver hit on the main guy, so that's going pretty well back there. I would be able to do something else, but I've run out of stamina. So that's that fatigue system I mentioned. Your fatigue builds up quite quickly if you use your shield defensively, so by raising it earlier I now can't attack as much I'm being punished, so need to keep that in mind. I also need to split this guy in front of my axe dude in half using split man. Unfortunately the chance of that hitting isn't too good and we do miss. Luckily that guy misses right back at us with two stabs, they're just dancing around over there. Our reliable spear fellow grabs another hit, we're going to use him to stop the guy who killed my sacrifice from coming back into the fight. While up here we try to kill their main armoured leader, Hoggard. We grab another hit with our mining pick guy, so we've blasted this guy quite a few times, he's got no armour and barely any health. Sufficient that when we get our next hit, it finishes him off. We also killed the guy at the bottom of the screen with our reliable spear fellow. Then we have to surround the enemy archer, our axe guy eventually lands a hit on him and finishes him off with no further casualties, so there we go. We lost two of our seven, although one of them was sort of expected, the Thorismund sacrificial running strategy kind of worked, was it worth it? I don't know. But the loss of Hakon there is very annoying. Looking at the loot, again not very much, and you might note there's no armour here, well not very much armour, just that one bit of a hat. The thing about this game is that armor functions kind of like another health bar, but when you lose that armor bar, the armor item itself disappears. So in a fight, when you attack the enemy and their armor goes down, their equipment disappears and you can't pick it up afterwards. There are apparently ways to stab through armor and kill enemies without their armor bar being completely depleted, and then you get some loot off them as a result. But for now, we just pick up a couple of broken weapons and walk home. So we need to go and grab the payment for this job. But as mentioned, we lost quite a lot of money on the job. So overall, perhaps not the best mission. What we have achieved, though, is the completion of the tutorial. So that's why I said there's not really a tutorial. That was it. Doesn't even really tell you what to do. We're just here now. So we can do our own thing, I'm actually wasting time because time is moving while I'm reading tooltips. Should never even be reading tooltips in the first place, that's just not my style. So now we need to get more missions to try and get some money and build our way back out of our not very good situation. There happens to be a mission at the town we're already at. It's a one skull mission, meaning it's the easiest type, so that's good news, although I didn't know that at the time. You can also negotiate for getting more pay in missions, I didn't in this case. We're going to get paid 450, I think if you ask, they sometimes pay you a bit more but they like you less or something. Before we head out though, we might as well gear up, we can sell a few of the weapons we got for negligible profit and buy some armour as well to make us a bit more survivable. So our team's now a bit stronger, we applied some level ups as well. And we're good to go, we've got plenty of food, let's go hunt some beasts out there. I could also hire another guy, but then I would have so little money that I might not be able to stay out for long, so I didn't want to do that, I just walked off with my five guys. We found the wolves pretty much right away, it's three dire wolves. This sounded to me like a nice easy battle, fighting three wolves, surely that's better than fighting like four humans, which we did in the last battle. Well. Not necessarily, as we'll see. 
We start at a sort of strange angle to the enemy. That's because where you put your guys in your little equipment menu changes where they start in battle. So I didn't realize that you need to move them towards the middle of the menu to have them be on the same axis as the incoming enemy. All we're going to do then is walk towards these wolves and attack them. Not too much we can do. They're doing the same thing back to us. Trying to have the shields out in front but failing miserably. And our axe guy does get torn up over there. Our shield guy gets a bit less torn up. These wolves have a low action point attack, meaning they can attack you a lot in the same turn. Inconvenient. So now it's time for us to start stabbing them. I tried to focus down the one in the middle here. And we nearly killed it. We took off all of its quote-unquote armor and most of its health and now it's trying to run away which means I think it won't fight us. Unfortunately the other two are fighting us and our axe guy gets annihilated looks like his head exploded or something so that's inconvenient and our reliable spear guy nearly dies he loses all of his armor and 95% of his health so if anything touches him now he will just die as well. This isn't going very well, is it? We've already lost more money's worth of guy than we're going to get paid for the mission. Although people were saying before I played, don't fret about keeping your party members alive, I can't see a solution that it involves letting your party members die at this stage because you'd have to pay to get more and that will just mean you're in a never-ending cycle where you can't make any money. So I think you do need to keep your party members alive. You can save scum in this game, but I am going to be iron manning it for this campaign because that's just how I roll. Our crossbow guy messes up again with his super low accuracy, 40 something percent chance to hit at nearly point blank range. Unfortunately, our spear guy gets mauled to death in the enemy's subsequent attacking turns. And now we're just here trading blows, really. We just need good RNG. Maybe our things will hit, maybe theirs weren't, maybe we'll eventually kill them. And our crossbow guy continues to disappoint. We can reload, fire again, that low probability hit, missing once more. So at this stage, I was pretty disillusioned with crossbows. I was convinced that spears are the way to go. And we'll be getting some more spears soon, but it's probably not going to be these guys by the looks of things. Because while we don't lose this fight, we win in terrible condition. Our two melee guys are nearly dead with all of their gear wrecked. Our crossbow guy is okay, but he's not very good anyway. The final wolf actually retreats and we can just let it go because the it's over button was very appealing at this point. It is over. Our crew is basically dead again with three party members and essentially no money. It's going to be very difficult to buy our way back out of this situation. One thing that you can't do, which I thought maybe you would be able to do, well, I guess I didn't really expect this, was to be able to take the money off of your fallen brothers because you're paying them to come with you, but presumably they're still carrying the money when they die. You could take it back. Unfortunately, that's not quite how the game works. You don't even get most of the stuff they're wearing when they die because it explodes in battle or something. So that's the end of that. This isn't actually the end of my campaign, but it kind of is for this first leg. Essentially, I went back to town, spent all of my money again to try and put together some more dudes. I got lucky with a mission that was just to walk somewhere, so I got some extra money for free. But then the next mission I had to take on was the wolf thing again, and they absolutely annihilated me again. So that was the true end of this attempt. I actually had one last hope, which was that if I have my final surviving party member stand outside of town, when the wolves who were chasing me around the map come to attack me, maybe like guys would come out of the town to help or something, but it's not quite like that unfortunately, so we end up facing this battle. I was able to retreat from that battle so we didn't get game over or anything, but afterwards I went into the menu and hit retire, which is how you just end your mercenary career, it's not going very well suffice to say. And here we are, begging on the streets. The text says we eventually join someone else's company, so not quite the worst possible ending, despite our zero point score. We didn't even die. So that's that, and that was Battle Brothers. I think that was the same experience I had when I played this when it first came out. I think I got the game for free when it released, played it to pretty much this conclusion, and that was the end of that. But because this is now a professional playthrough, we're going to come back using what has been learned in this first disaster to try and do it a second time. Therefore, 
here we are back in the initial tutorial battle. It's actually going a bit worse this time, our crossbow guy has been beaten up but is somehow still alive. I wonder if it doesn't let you lose this battle, maybe the enemy can't hit you or something so that your initial three members are always alive. I don't know, well, I suppose it can go better in that your equipment can survive the battle more. In this case, we stab our way to victory, and there we go, another first tutorial battle successfully won. I think we did get less loot than last time, so it is going worse so far. But we have much better knowledge. We can immediately start preparing a more effective party. I'm going to avoid purchasing expensive party members and spend more money on stuff. So our starting lineup here before we head out to do the main part of the initial mission is now better equipped with armor and our front row of four guys all have shields, albeit one of them has a tiny buckler. I was going to give them all spears, but there was only one spear for sale in the shop, so we can't do that, but that's something to aspire to. So now with our newly recreated Battle Brothers, maybe things won't go quite so badly. And that's what we'll be covering in the next part of this series. So why don't you join me after this sort of part zero prelude for the real Battle Brothers campaign, when we manage to actually get at least some progress in. Haven't played that far ahead, so I don't know how long it's going to last. Statistically, not very long, given the sort of game this is. So we'll find out how long it takes me to die starting next time.